So welcome to the video looking into uh, gluteal pain in runners. So gluteal pain in runners can be quite challenging to diagnose. There's a lot of differential diagnosis which you can encounter in this region. Um, so it's having a simple system when you deal with somebody with a chronic gluteal pain. For me, the first place to start would always be to rule out lumbar spine and SIJ. So the most common cause for chronic gluteal pain is referred pain from the lumbar spine. So it could be disc pathology, it could be from the uh, um, in a facet, it could be any structures, any potential uh, referral pattern from the lumbar spine can cause buttock pain. And also uh, be mindful of SIJ, so people with hypermobility, people with ankylosing spondylitis, people with inflammatory pathologies can have SIJ pain referring into the buttocks as well. So a bilateral buttock pain in a young male should always raise suspicion of um, uh, seronegative ankylosing spondylitis. Once you ruled out lumbar spine and the hip and the SIJ, the next place to rule out is the hip joint. We know at least 30 to 40 percent of patients with hip OA also have buttock pain. So if you have a chronic hip pathology, it could be anything from hip osteoarthritis to hip impingement to hip dysplasia, that can cause chronic buttock pain. So doing a hip testing, which we went before, doing a fair test, Faber test, visit a straight leg and seeing whether that causes the buttock pain. So normally people with hip OA will complain of stiffness in the morning, difficulty putting shoes and socks, a bit of limping, difficulty in stairs. So those sort of, and generally they are 40, 45 plus. Uh, so that sort of gives you the idea that it could be referred from the hip as well. So if you've done a thorough assessment and you feel it's not from the back SIJ or the hip, then usually it's one of the four causes which I'll go through in the next slide. But before we do that, we need to make sure that we don't miss red flags. One not so common red flag is stress fracture of the sacrum. This is something which you see more in the middle age, male or female. So if they have had a recent spike in training and they, so you, you got to run like a 55 year old male coming in a clinic and limping and had to stop running and having severe buttock pain. One thing which will be back on the mind is a sacral fracture. Sacral fractures can be quite vague and non-specific but usually they won't be able to continue running. So if you've got somebody who's, who's a runner, had a spike in training and is having severe buttock pain and not able to run anymore, that could be a differential diagnosis. Uh, sadly, they don't get picked up on x-ray. So if you suspect uh, sacral fracture, uh, stress fracture of the sacrum, it's al always MRI of the pelvis. So you want to make sure that you don't miss this. And this can take a long time to recover. It can be anywhere from three to nine months. Um, the second one which I just mentioned is uh, seronegative inflammatory pathologies like ankylosing spondylitis, psoriasis. So if a patient says getting buttock pain, they're waking up at night, they're feeling stiff in the morning for more than 30 minutes. Uh, the common presentation is usually young men below the age of 30. The average time it takes to diagnose in the UK is about seven to eight years. The, uh, the key reason is because the history is so um, non specific initially. So if you've got somebody young complaining of severe buttock pain waking up in the night, uh, that might be something you want to consider is ankylosing spondylitis. Third is malignancy. So one of the strongest indicators of cancer is previous cancer. So you got like a 48 year old female runner who had breast cancer 15 years ago and comes with worsening back and buttock pain. That should be something back of your mind. If somebody had previous cancer uh, and they come with unexplained hip pain, uh, because hip is the second most area where you get metastasis. The number one area is thoracic spine. The number two is uh, around the hip region. So if you got unexplained hip pain in somebody with a previous history of cancer, as per the NICE guidelines in UK, it needs an MRI to make sure there is no secondaries, um, especially around the hip and pelvis. The last one is vascular claudication. So you get like somebody who's a smoker or diabetic complaining of bilateral buttock pain. It might be with circulation, so they might get cold feet, cold hands, and when they walk, they get severe buttock pain. So they might need to be referred to vascular department. So that's why buttock pain is quite a difficult area because there's so many things which can refer in. But to simplify it, um, always check with the back and the SIJ, look at the hip joint, and then if, if that is, uh, is not the case, it's usually the four pathologies. By far the most common cause for chronic buttock pain in runners is proximal hamstring tendinopathy, which is basically where you get that sort of uh, pain around the sitting bone. There's also another condition called deep gluteal syndrome, which is a little bit more proximal. And also there's other condition called ischiofemoral impingement. 
And another condition which you see in a cyclist called pudental neuralgia, which is usually managed by um, pelvic health physios. So those are the four common pathologies which can happen locally. So proximal hamstring tendinopathy, deep gluteal syndrome, ischiofemoral impingement, and pudental neuralgia. By far the most common is definitely um, your uh, proximal hamstring tendinopathy, which we'll go through in detail on the management. So that concludes the video looking into introduction to gluteal pain in runners. Um, so rule out the red flags like the stress fractures uh, of the sacrum, and if not the most common reason generally, if it's not from the back or the hip, it's generally proximal hamstring tendinopathy. Thank you.